Hey, Boaz here from Next Pittsburgh. I'm here walking along the Allegheny River to check out Tree Pittsburgh headquarters. So you've probably seen them around at different community events, or maybe you've gotten one of their trees. Well, today we're going to find out where all those trees come from. And to explain it, we've got Joe, the education director, and Matt, who's the nursery operations manager. Did I remember all those titles? Perfect. Welcome. Gosh, thanks for having us here. So we're in front of this grand Tree Pittsburgh building. So is this where all the trees come from? This is headquarters for us. So this is where all the staff start. All the trees grow here behind the building. Yeah. And we're under the 62nd Street Bridge, but it's a nice hidden spot down here and it's a wonderful property. Yeah, and it's five acres long, right? It's actually a very long, narrow site. So five acres in size. Think of Heinz Field playing surface. That's about one acre. Okay. And it's bordered by the river and the railroad tracks. Gosh, well, let's walk down and explore some of it. Okay, so as we're walking through the property here, this place here is kind of our education and event space. Um, people can use the room. We do a lot of classes here. Yeah, I'm looking inside here and I'm spotted. Is that your squirrel mascot? So the mascot of Tree Pittsburgh is Oakley. Oakley is a large squirrel. Uh, this is the cardboard cutout display. We do have an Oakley that roams around at a lot of our events and festivals. I'm not only a sucker for mascot costumes, I'm also a sucker for squirrels. So this is just like hitting me just right. All right, so we're walking towards a sign that says Seedling Nursery, and there's a plastic owl also. <laughs> yeah, so this is our greenhouse. This is where everything gets started. Um, we grow about 104 varieties of species, mostly all natives, um, natives to this region, native to the country. Um, so everything gets started in here. We put about 50 or so, 50 to 100 seeds in each one of these boxes. These are pawpaw. So oh, nice. Pawpaw is the largest native fruiting tree. So how many like trees are you starting right now like i mean in these tubs there must be thousands of them so in here there's probably about 100,000 seeds that we put in the ground we're hoping that equates to about 50,000 seedlings um, and then we'll transition that to hopefully 20 25,000 containerized plants everything in here is from 2022 um, and we'll probably leave a lot of this stuff some of the bigger stuff we're going to transplant out here in the next six weeks so after they get substantial size, like in here, we'll transplant them into these two to three gallon size containerized pots. Um, and then they'll grow for another year, maybe even two years, depending on what the species is. Off the left here, these are all trees that are finished products. These are ready to go. Let's go, let's go close over here. So these are the ones, so when people sign up for like a free tree from Tree Pittsburgh, these are the kind of trees that they'd be getting. Yeah, about this size. These specific trees are going to go to North Park. There are like a few different parts of, of the organization. So the tree adoption, I feel like that's what I see sort of most often. But then you also just grow them for parks, or how does that work? Yeah, we um, have a lot of nonprofit partners that we that purchase our trees. So like half of what we grow goes to where it's the parks or it's uh, conservancies, things like that. So they're purchasing most of the trees. Okay, we're going to have to stop for a second because I see something really exciting happening over here. I think Oakley is here to see us. I did not know this was going to happen. I was already like thrilled to know that. Oakley, so nice to see you. It's like a pleasure to meet you and to be here at Tree Pittsburgh. Um, do you have a favorite tree? Maybe you can point to it. I don't know if you're capable of talking. So Oakley does not talk, but I can okay. translate for Oakley. Yeah. So favorite tree for Oakley would have to be the oaks. So speaking of oak trees, this is how we grow oaks. Um, we put about 10 or 12 in a circle inside these pots, cover them with some soil, and then we put the, if you see down at the end, the cage over the top to prevent Oakley from coming and eating all the nuts. So Oakley, do you have any favorite dance moves? That's something you can show us. Oh, Macarena going old school. I love it. We are working on transplanting right now, so all this stuff is things that we've transplanted recently with the help of volunteers. So if people want to get one of these trees, how can they do it? Well, the best way is to sign up for our newsletter, and that will let you know when our adoptions are coming up, uh, the species that are available, and from the website, you could sign up, and hopefully you can get a tree. And I'm seeing some, like, big water tanks over here. So, like, how do you fill those, or, or how do you water all these trees, like, on in a week like this, where it's, like, so warm and sunny? So most of the nursery is under irrigation. These posts here sticking out of the ground are little sprinklers. And then where does the water come from? We're fortunate enough to be right here in the Allegheny River, so we get all the water pumped up from the river. Like a hose that's just like out a, there? Like a big hose, yeah. And then it comes up as about 60 feet climb, and it goes into some of these water, t water holding tanks. It runs through about six filters before it gets to the end of the hose. Um, so we filter out most of the particles and any kind of weird stuff that's in the Allegheny. What try... sort of weird stuff have you found in the filters? We found some fish a few times. We had a fish that made all the way into our holding tank one year. Um, we were cleaning it out in the middle of summer, and there's a fish swimming around in there. 
It was a little white fish. I don't know how it made it all the way through the filters and everything, but it did. So I had to fish that fish out, which was pretty complicated, but we, we got it and we released it back into the river. And we've got a, a work of art behind you here. So this was a creation by artist Jan Loney, and this is all of our retired wheelbarrows and shovels from all the projects we've done over the years. Cool. And then back here is a trail. So there's a hidden boat ramp access behind us here. Uh, before we were on site here, this used to be the Tippin Steel Mill. And on this side of the railroad track, there were some outbuildings. And you said even as recently as like 2017, some of the buildings were still here. So we looked on Google Maps and we kind of went back in time on the calendar of Street View and we could still see the entire Tippin Steel Mill up until about 2017. Yeah. Uh, and then it was completely demolished and left as a designated brownfield site, which means there's a lot of soil contaminants, really hard to build on that site. But for what we needed to do here, uh, you know, we could put our building on site, we could have our nursery here and use it perfectly. Wow, this is wild. You're just right on the river. So when we bring groups down here, that's like my first question. How many people have visited a river in Pittsburgh? And it's not a lot of people that can raise their hand because we don't have a lot of safe access to the river. It's not as polluted and as gross as a lot of people think about when they think of our three rivers. Even where we're standing, there's lots of shells and bits of life. So we know that trees do many things for us in our communities, you know, from providing shade, which can cool our neighborhoods down, to giving us clean air, filtering out pollutants. But along the river is where they really show off their skills. One of the things they do is they stabilize the hillside. The roots of the trees kind of anchor the bank into place so we don't lose it. Another thing they do is they drop a lot of leaves. Those leaves end up in the water, sink down to the bottom where there's really cool insects that need them and they feed on them. Things like stone flies, caddis flies, may flies. Trees also provide a lot of shade on the water, which keeps the water temperature cooler, which keeps more oxygen in the water, which is better for animals breathing through gills. We also have a lot of turtles that sun themselves on the tree branches, fish that sort of nest in the tangled roots and branches that are here. So these are some of the trees that you planted here like a few years ago. Yeah, so our volunteers came out in 2016 and planted all the trees around us that are in these tubes. And when they were planted, there was nothing above us. This was all knotweed. And the trees were from our nursery and they were only about as tall as these tubes. So from 2016 to today, the trees are out of the tubes. They're actually splitting open on the, on the back side here. And that tells us that that's how long they're supposed to be in the tube. Yeah. But I know we looked at some of the pawpaw seeds in the nursery. Uh, and I'll kind of show you our secret pawpaw patch of trees down here. Uh, they're right up here behind me. So these two trees that I have my hands on, these are both pawpaw trees. And some of them still have flowers on. So they're kind of hard to see, but there's like purplish... Uh, dark flowers on this tree and there's two of them here so they can pollinate each other. The cool thing about pawpaw trees aside from the fruit yeah. is that they clone themselves well. So if we look down on the hillside all these pawpaw trees that are not in tubes these are clones from the roots of these two parent trees wow. and they're growing everywhere down here not protected with tubes. The deer don't touch them so over time we will have a large pawpaw patch here. Yeah. These do produce fruits um, if we can get them before the possums, skunks and other animals do. Uh, you know, we leave some for them, but we also use some to grow more seeds in our nursery. Well, and this is a great teaching tool for us down here as well, because we can do a short trail walk here and probably show off 20 to 30 different species, all from the nursery, all collected locally from Pittsburgh, and show people that in a very short time, they can create a fun part of a healthy urban forest. Gosh, well, thanks so much for the tour. This was awesome. Well, thank you very much and enjoy.